So we're now going to talk about the complex exponential. Let's begin with a definition. The complex exponential is defined as follows. E to the i theta is equal to, and this is now by definition, cosine phi plus i sine pi like this. Uh, so what does this mean? So this is basically a, a, a purely geometric thing at this point. So we here have the unit circle in the complex plane. And by the definition of sine and cosine, so sine and cosine theta sine theta is actually a coordinate here that lies on the unit circle, such that the ray from the origin to this point has angle uh, theta radians. So this thing here is just another way of writing this coordinate using complex notation. So I might as well have written this up here. So keep in mind that if you have a coordinate x comma y in the, in the plane, you can express this in complex notation as this. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that this thing here has nothing to do with the exponential function, right? We're defining this symbol here just in terms of a coordinate in the complex plane uh, that's expressed in terms of the cosine and sine of a certain angle. And here we can notice also that, well, here we're just expressing um, numbers on the complex or on the unit circle but if we here multiply by r or let's say let's multiply by 2 so 2 ei phi what is that well that's as if i take this uh, vector here this point here and add it with itself so i get something that's twice the length so this guy here who is like this is twice the length of the original guy and more generally if i take away the 2 here and I multiply with an r, I'm getting here a point in the complex plane that has angle theta and that has length r. So the length here of that point would be r. And then of course, if I vary theta r between zero and infinity, and this angle between zero and two pi, I can express any point I want in the complex plane. And of course, this, present, this uh, representation is not unique. Because if I want to rep represent this point, for instance, I can go one circle or one times around the unit circle, twice, three times, etc. So this gives a non-unique representation, but of every point. But now the thing is, so if this has nothing to do with the, the exponential function, why use this notation? Well, the point is, this guy actually acts a whole lot like the exponential function. And in fact, once you start talking about Taylor polynomials and Taylor series, you'll see that this connection is um, quite strong. This is actually the way to extend, the one natural way to extend the exponential function to complex, um, complex variables. But that comes uh, much, much later uh, in, in this course. So what we're going to do now is just consider the following proposition, which lists a couple of rules that can be deduced from this definition almost directly. So first of all, we have this. Second, we have this thing here. Now these are all rules that really resemble what you would expect from a, um, an exponential function. The only thing is that the proofs here have nothing to do with it. And then we're doing the four. So we're now doing this, I think nth power here and the nth power goes inside. So how to prove something like this? Well, the point is to use this um, formula here and then uh, known formulas about the um, trigonometric functions. For instance, let's do proof of um, three. So three is this guy here. So we want to show that if we put minus i theta up here, it's the same as if we had one over e i theta. So now, Let's do it like, um, so we're going to prove this by a chain of equalities. And let's start out with this side here and then try to simplify. So by the definition, this is exactly this thing. So we have the reciprocal of a complex number. And to simplify the reciprocal of a complex number, we multiply um, or we extend by its uh, conjugate, the conjugate of the thing down here. So now we take this thing and we multiply in the denominator and numerator by cosine theta minus i sine theta. 
So in the numerator, nothing much happens, but in the denominator, we get this product here. And this is of the form a minus b times a plus b, which gives us a squared minus b squared like this. And um, in this case, this becomes cosine square theta uh, minus i sine theta squared. And up here we get cosine theta minus i sine uh, theta like this. What happens down here? Well, i squared is plus one. So down here we get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And up here we get now cosine theta. And we can do one thing here. So the sine function is an odd function. So I can take this minus sign and put inside of here. I'm getting here plus i sine minus theta. Why am I doing this? Well, I know I'm kind of trying to, uh, let's say mathematically massage this guy until this thing appears, okay? And I'm supposed to get a minus sign in the argument here. So this is a good thing. And now what I can notice is that uh, cosine is an even function. So he doesn't care if I put a minus inside or not. So let's just do that, right? Then I have the i sine minus theta here. And now the problem is that we have this guy downstairs, but well, that's just perfect because the Pythagorean identity says that this is identically equal to one. So this just goes away and I'm left with this, which is by this definition up here, nothing but a way or the way to write this. And we are done.